So we have a public function here, but we need these to be private functions because they're only going to be used in here. So we'll say private, oh, sorry, private function, uh, create a URL, that's for the URL address. And then the other one is private function, create user ID, open close. Okay, there we go. So now here, we're going to call this function here for the URL address, we'll say that. And then also here, create that one. We're going to copy this and put it there. Okay. Now the URL address will be created. Actually, we don't need to, uh, to create this one because the URL address, we want it to be a clean version of the name. So we're going to create it right here. We're just going to say the first name and then concatenate a dot and then add last name. So let's say the person is uh, John, John something, uh, John Banda or something. So the URL address is going to be John and then dot Banda. Now we want this to be in small letters because it's a URL. So we're going to say there's a, a, a function called UC. Uh, it's actually string to lower I like that one. So it makes sure that all whatever is in this string is reduced to lowercase. So let me copy this up to there as well, because I need this to be in lowercase. Okay. And then now we can generate a random user name, user ID. Now we know that the user ID should be uh, 19, uh, maximum of 19 numbers. So we don't need to reach that far. We can still just uh, generate a random number. So to generate a random number, what we do is let me create a variable and say is equal to, there's a function called rand, and then you put in the minimum number. I want the, at least the user ID to be a minimum of four letters, and then the maximum one, which will be nine. Uh, actually four, I want to know how long this will be. So between four and 19. So it's going to create a random number between four and 19. So this one will be the length of the number. We want it to be a random value. Okay, so the length will be determined by a random number that PHP will choose between four and 19. So once we get this number, let's loop through. So this is where we learn the second uh, type of loop which uses numbers. This one is the for loop. So this is how the for loop works. So the for loop works by selecting a random, uh, we create a random variable, we're going to call it i, and then we say i is equal to zero. So it means we are starting at zero, okay? From zero. Now, in my case, I want to start at one. And then we say when i is less, less than, for as long as i, actually maybe let me just start at zero, it's okay. So what's happening here is the starting point is zero. This is the condition. So for as long as this condition is true, this loop will keep running. And then each time the loop runs, i is added, incremented by one. Okay. So semicolon, this condition, semicolon, I plus plus. So I plus plus is the same as saying I is equal to I plus one. Okay, like we were doing last time when it's the same as also saying I plus equals one. It's also same as saying I plus plus. Okay, so now down here 
we are telling it that let's say let's imagine for example this length is equal to four it means this loop will run four times so each time the loop runs i want it to select a random number from zero to nine so what i'm going to do here is say num so let me let me assign the number at the top here so that it stays constant number is equal to let's say uh, this one will actually be text it won't be an actual number like so what i'm going to say is number is equal to number and so here we create a new random number again so new rand is equal to random from 0 to 9 so this is all the numbers 0 to 9 so a new random number now we add to this one so what we are doing here is this let's say length is equal to let's say it has chosen number 10 okay so the length of this user id will be 10 digits because that same length we're going to use it here to loop through here so if the number is 10 we're going to loop here 10 times so while we are doing that while we are going through here we are choosing a random number from 0 to 9 and adding it so for example if the first random number is 2 we add then 4 6 what what and so on and so on until we get to 10 digits then we use this as the user id so this is what's happening here okay so once this is done at the end of this all we return the number whatever that number is so here that number will be shoved into this user id because that's the return value from this function so it will be going in there so we've created that we've created that now before we save here I want to comment this out so that we can test everything before we actually save into the database. So all I want it here is to return to return the query so that we see it for ourselves before it goes into the database. Okay? So let me check this out now. So this is the class called sign up with an error there we we create and then we have a function to evaluate to make sure that everything is not empty if everything is not empty and then we proceed no error we uh, create a user we call this function here if there's an error we return the error so here to create the user we create the first name last name and all those details and then uh, these are created by PHP and then when we are done we create a query and then i just want to see what is inside that query so in order to do all this let's go back here since this is a different file the signup.php and also this is a different file we have to include those two files we have to include the database file and we have to include we have to include all the classes in here that we are going to be using so if i check in here where there are classes there will be pages where we just need the connect uh, class or the sign up class now in this case we need both so we need to include them now to include a file at the top here what you just say is include and that's it open bracket and then you name the file now that file is inside the folder called classes that's why we'll go in that folder slash connect so connect should always be don't don't forget to put the php connect will always be the first thing we add so let me copy that again and add also uh, sign up dot php so this is where the classes are because when we call them we're going to need them to be there so we are including this file now what include actually does is it's similar to having when i include this file it's similar to having this file before all this so where i include here where i say include it will get all this code here and put it inside this file and run it so it's as good as having that file in here when we include it like this but the reason we make separate files is to make the code easier to read so when we get to this point 
we have to create uh, we have to instantiate the sign up and this is the sign up class so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say sign up is equal to new sign up now make sure the other one is uh, capital letter this one is capital letter because that's what that's what we used here to create the class so we've created this class now this class we want to access one of its functions which is evaluate the data so we're going to say sign up evaluate now we need to pass in the data because as you can see this function requires that you pass in some information so the information we are passing let me leave some space here is this post information we put it in there this is an array of the user data and then if we receive uh, from here i want to see what we're going to receive whatever we receive i want to echo it so i'll do that or what i could do is i can just say result is equal to and then i can echo the result like that now these i don't need for now so let me do this all right so we include these files when we hit post button we create this uh, sign up class and then we check the result so instead of accessing connect.php we have to go and access signup.php which is this one okay so there we go let me open it there's a syntax error string to lower unexpected on line 40 in signup.php so let's go back to signup.php on line 40 that's there so what is it saying unexpected string so it's telling me that this one is unexpected oh it's unexpected here oh so what i've done here string to lower and then i've added a literal string of a dot and then i should concatenate that as well so i'm connecting this to this to that okay so over with the syntax error and there we go so we get nothing and then let's hit post now aha uh -huh. so here we have managed to get all the result first name is empty email is empty password is empty password 2 is empty but there's an error here an identified variable error on line 15 in signup.php where is this so we go back and check line 15 so this error is this one so like we said in order to access a variable from inside we have to use the this like so and then again here this that should work so let me do this again on where is this variable on line 19 i think i've broken it some more where is that Ah, there we go. So this as well here. And same thing here. Mm -hmm. Did I say return error anywhere else? Okay. I think we are good now. Let me refresh. So now it's showing us this. First name is empty. What, what, what? So we could put something like error here. So we have to check if this is not empty, then we know there are errors. So if result is not equal to, so by the way, that's how you say is not equal to empty. If it's not empty, you echo it. okay so so far so good the video has gone on too long so i'm going to see you in the next video when we continue